Well, good morning, home worshipers, and welcome to this November 28th service on this United Methodist Student Day and the first Sunday of Advent. Let us begin to prepare for the arrival of baby Jesus as we open our hearts and minds to our Lord and Savior and give our thanks to our Creator because God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Let us pray. Father God, we offer our thanks for your presence with us this day. It is by your love that has made us and your love that has kept us. We humbly ask that you forgive us for what we've been. And we ask you to help us to amend what we are this day. And please guide us to what you have called us to be tomorrow. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Today's Holy Scripture comes from the New Testament book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. I ask that you listen as I read from Matthew's Gospel. <clears throat> ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who searches finds, and the door for those who knock will be opened. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Someone once said, You, you may be the only Bible someone ever reads. Having said that, I think the only way that you make that we truly can be the Bible for someone is if we do two things. And those two things are that we need to study and we need to pray. Let's first talk about study. John 8, 31 tells us this. If you continue in my word, that is to say, if you study, you will come to know the truth, and this truth will free you from sin. There's a story about a small Baptist church that allowed time for personal testimonies during every Sunday worship service. A certain man would always stand and participate. Each Sunday he would stand and testify and conclude every testimony by saying this, and I quote, Friends, I'm aiming to do better. This went on Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Finally, after 15 weeks of such testimony, a lady sitting behind him tapped him on the shoulder and said, Friend, I think it's time you quit aiming and start pulling the trigger. <laughs> Study helps us not only to aim better, you and I, but helps us to pull the trigger, so to speak. You see, the Bible was given to us, a gift as a guide, guidebook on how to live a Christ-like life. And when we take time to focus on God's Word, true study, then the Word is with us always. When trouble comes, when temptation peeks its ugly head just around the corner, even when we have times of joy, the Bible, God's Word is there to guide us. So folks, study God's Word. Which causes me to ask a question, why don't we study God's Word? And I find there are some very convenient, oftentimes uh, used excuses for why we don't want to study. Excuse number one, I don't know where to begin. If that's your excuse, I suggest you follow Dr. Billy Graham's four-step approach to studying the Bible. Step one, each day read one, just one chapter from John's 21 chapter book. Ready? Step two, do the same for the 28, 28 chapters of the book of Acts, the story of how Jesus' first disciples went out into the world to make more disciples. Step three, read the 20 letters that Jesus' apostles wrote to his first followers, those new to their faith. These letters begin with Romans and end with 3 John. Step four, read the three remaining Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'll add a fifth step, if I may. Move on to the Old Testament, one book at a time. Excuse number two, I don't understand the Bible. Well, welcome to my world. The Bible is hard to understand, and the reason is because of the language that is used, the historical and the cultural gap between when it was written and here we are some 2,000 years later. And when exactly was it written? The Old Testament, the original Hebrew Bible, the sacred scriptures of the Jewish faith, they were written between 1200 and 165 B.C. 
That's before the birth of Christ. The New Testament was written by Christians in the first century A.D. following the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So folks, I, s I encourage you to find a version of a Bible that is in a language that is easy for you to read and easy for you to understand. I compliment my study with a book called The Bible for Dummies. I recommend it, and I read it occasionally when I ever get paused to think about what exactly is happening here at this part in the Bible. Then with a Bible in hand, one that you can read, before you sit down, pray. Pray for God to help you understand what you're about to read. Then read it humbly, with faith, as God sends His Holy Spirit to show you His truth. Also, I encourage you to be part of a Bible study and seek counsel from Christian friends for their understanding of the Word and what it means to them. Well, excuse number three. I just don't have the time to study the Bible. Folks, if that's your excuse, don't you dare let God know it. Folks, simply set aside 30 minutes or more each day, each day, a minimum of five days a week, to read your Bible. Do that for a month. For research says that if you do something daily for a month, it will become a habit. Okay, now let's talk about that second thing, which is prayer. In a family circus comic, Little Billy was praying. He said this, God, make me good, and if you don't get through to me the first time, please keep on trying. I think that could be a prayer for each and every one of us folks. Prayer is the only subject Jesus discussed twice in his Sermon on the Mount. This clearly illustrates that there is no substitute for prayer in the Christian life. Through prayer, we open our hearts to the big heartedness of our God. There are things that God does because of prayer that he doesn't do any other way. If we're going to invite God to fellowship with us, and if we're going to involve God in our daily lives, we must pray and pray daily. And when we pray, we should follow God's requirements for prayer. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Now, there are three verbs in this verse. Ask, search, and knock. These verbs are commands. They are commands. So prayer, folks, is not a request by God. It's a requirement. And if prayer is a command, then not to pray, I think, is a sin. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, reads this way, and I quote, Moreover, as for me, far be it for me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Think about it. When you don't pray, you're actually committing three sins against three different persons. First, you sin against the Lord who commands you to pray. Second, you sin against others who depend. Yes, I say depend upon your prayers. And third, you sin against yourself by denying a blessing that comes only when you pray. Allow me to expand a bit further on this. There are two categories of sin we have. Category one, sins of commission. These are actions that are overtly done. Sins that are seen, sins that are heard. Actions like murder, theft, and telling a lie. Category two are sins of omission. Sins that result when we fail, folks. When we fail to do something which we are able to do. A Sunday school teacher asked her first grade class, what are sins of omission? Little girl blurted out, oh, those are the sins we should have committed, but we just didn't. Uh, of course, that's a first grader's definition. So folks, as the Bible says, we can sin by doing the wrong thing or by failing to do the right thing. James 4, verse 17 says this, Therefore, to those who know to do good and don't, to them it is a sin. So in prayer, keep on asking, keep on searching, and keep on knocking. Let's look at those three commands a little closer. Obviously, prayer begins with, Ask, and it will be given to you. One of the problems isn't unanswered prayer, but unasked for prayer. I need to say that again. One of the problems isn't unanswered prayer, but unasked for prayer. Billy Graham once said this, Heaven is full of answers to prayers for which no one 
has ever bothered to ask. James 4, 2 says, you have not because you ask not. So folks, don't give up on God. Don't you dare to quit praying. Asking expresses dependence. I will admit that. When you pray, you're acknowledging that you are dependent upon God. When children reach a certain age, the IRS no longer allows us to clear them as dependents. With God, we never reach that IRS age. We are always dependent upon God. That's the reason we must ask through prayer, because it expresses our dependence upon our God. The next step is to search. Search, and you will find. Searching expresses our desire. Searching is a deeper level of praying than just asking. When you ask, you know what you're asking for. But when you search, you're trying to find what it is that God is wanting from you or to find what God is wanting for you. Paul talked about this in uh, praying in Romans 8, verses 26 and 27, when he said this, The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit makes intercession for us according to the will of God. But there's also the discipline of knocking. Knock and the door will be open for you. Knocking expresses, expresses our determination. I was thinking about the five daughters, Mandy, Molly, Megan, Carrie, and Kathleen, who have been in my life. If I was there and a daughter wanted something, they would ask me for it. And if I didn't give an immediate response, guess what? They would keep asking until I responded. Now stay with me, okay? Stay with me. If I wasn't there for them to ask, that daughter wanted something, she would have to search for me and continue to search until I was found so that she could ask for what she wanted. Now, during those times when I needed a few minutes of peace and quiet, and parents, don't you need some peace and quiet from time to time? This adds a brand new twist to the situation. If I went to the den and shut the door just to have a bit of time for myself, do you think that daughter would give up searching? Not a chance. This is when that daughter would knock and knock and knock. Until I failed to respond, that daughter would keep on knocking until I did respond. There's a story of a dad who had four children and would get tired sometimes of the endless noise in his house, the scattering of toys throughout his house, and the influx of questions, questions, questions. In order to be alone, he would go into the bathroom, shut the door, and take a shower, even when a shower wasn't needed, just to have time alone. One day while in the shower, his five-year-old daughter, knowing exactly, exactly where he was, knocked on that bathroom door. With great irritation, the father shouted, Annie, all I want is privacy. The knocking stopped. But just as he breathed his second sigh of relief, a tiny voice says, Daddy, tell me where it is and I'll get your privacy for you. So folks, let's never stop asking, never stop searching, and never stop knocking. And here's why. God says, for everyone who asks, receives. For everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door is open. Now, we may not always receive the exact thing we ask for. In fact, we may get something better. Now, we may not find it at the time we're searching for it, but in God's time, we will eventually find it. Now, it may not be the door that we wanted open right then, but it may be a door leading us to something better. So folks, keep praying. The reason why we ought to pray is not because God will always, I repeat, always give us what we want, but because God will always give us what he wants us to have. Folks, prayer is an important, no, prayer is an essential part of our faith journey. Through prayer, we are brought directly to the throne of God. A Canadian man by the name of Ashley Brilliant, Ashley Brilliant, draws cartoons to go with his astute sayings. He calls them pot shots, P-O-T, pot shots. Here are three of my favorites. Number one, I tried to take one day at a time, but sometimes several days attacked me all at once. Number two, I always know the right thing to say after the right time to say it has passed. And number three, it would be easier to play my part in life if I had a copy of the script. Another pot shot I like shows two people with walking sticks in hand, 
climbing a mountain in knee-deep snow. The caption below the drawing says this, keep climbing upwards. You may never reach the top, but you're definitely going in the right direction. Folks, that's what prayer does for us. It keeps us aimed at the top, aimed and moving towards God as we do it. A final word about prayer. Just like study, I encourage you to set a time daily for prayer. Pray for 30 minutes. Pray for the first 10 minutes for yourself, asking God to bless you, to guide you, to keep you safe. Share with God what's on your heart. Ask for forgiveness, ask for direction, ask for comfort, ask for peace, and so on. For the next 10 minutes, pray for your family and for your friends, for your city, for your country, for your world, and for others. Pray for one another, as James tells us in 516. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Finally, the last 10 minutes, sit quietly and do nothing but listen. Listen, clear your mind and listen for God to speak to you.